So welcome back everyone to another lesson here, Statistics and Probability. So our lesson for today is on estimation of parameters. In on chapter 4, we have confidence interval estimation of the population mean with unknown variant. These are the four main objectives that we're going to hit today. And these are the three sub-objectives that we are going to hit. So recalling from previous lesson, we know that your confidence interval is constructed by your mean minus plus z value from the z table, z sub a over 2, and then you have standard deviation all over square root of n, which is your standard error of the point estimate. In this expression, the tabular value depends on the sampling distribution of the sample mean. You learned in the previous lecture that the tabular value to use in the mathematical expression when the population variance is known is to be taken from the standard normal distribution. But how about if the variance is unknown? How do we compute for the confidence interval estimation? For the first one, let's go to the construction and interpretation of a 1 minus alpha 100% confidence interval estimator of the population mean when the population variance is unknown. When the population variance is unknown, there is a slight change in the construction of the confidence interval. And the changes involve the tabular value and the standard error of the sample mean. So it's going to be, your tabular value is now going to be the t-table, the t-value from the t-table, and then your standard error of the point estimate. Your standard error of the point estimate is going to be standard deviation divided by square root of n. Now your population standard deviation is now going to be a point estimator of the population standard deviation. So in this no population standard def, yung population standard def, i.e., Ipo point estimate na natin. So, estimator na ng population standard def is going to be S. S squared is computed by the summation of the squares of the differences of each data to the mean all over n minus 1. So, your SE would now become S over square root of n. So, tabular value... We have the alpha of 0 0.05 as an example. So, pag 2 tail yan, i-divide nyo pa rin sa 2. So, 0 0.025 yung isa, 0 0.025 yung isa. Siyempre, if we're, if we're going to have just one tail, just retain the alpha level. So, ang area nun, to the right of the right tail, the distribution is going to be 0 0.05. Recalling, this is the t-table. You have your columns being your alpha level of significance and then you have your rows being your degree of freedom. The numbers inside are going to be your t-value. For example, this one. You have a selected probability of 0 0.025 and then you have the degree of freedom which is equivalent to n minus 1 as 3. That's going to be the value of 3.18. So tabular value mo would be 3.18. So, n minus 1, why is the degree of freedom n minus 1? It is because the degree of freedom is the number of values that are free to vary in a data set. So, for example, if you're asked to pick a set of numbers that have a mean or average of 10, that's 9, 10, 11, for example, those three, once the first two is chosen, the third number is fixed. So, kung ano mang set ng numbers ang meron ka, pag napili mo na yung dalawa, yung pangatlo, fix na yon. In other words, you cannot choose the third item in the set. The only numbers that are free to vary are the first two. So, kaya siya n minus 1. Kasi, out of, let's say, 10 sample size, out of 10 data, the only numbers that are free to vary are the 9 numbers. Out of 30 samples, ang free to vary mo lang doon 29. Eh di ba nga, ang degree of freedom ay numbers that are free to vary. Merging it all together, we're going to have point estimate, tabular value, and SE of the point estimate as follows, where your S is the point estimate of the standard deviation. So now let's move to maximum allowable deviation and required sample size. When the population variance is unknown, there is a slight change in the construction of the confidence interval. And the changes involve the tabular value and the standard error of the sample mean. So we're going to compute for the maximum allowable deviation. Your maximum allowable, de allowable deviation, we know that it is one bit. So the computation is shown as follows, upper limit minus lower limit. You're going to arrive at the answer twice. So that's your width. One of that is going to be your maximum allowable deviation. 
Next, you have required sample size from your maximum allowable deviation. So it's going to be tabular value times S as your numerator all over D equals the square root of N. Dahil square root yun, just to get the sample size, square both sides. You're going to have N equals tabular value times S all over D quantity squared. So from that, I now have the two formulas for maximum allowable deviation and the required sample size. This formula is same as with the quantity squared. We are halfway there, more than halfway there. Technically, we are two-thirds of the way there. Are you still doing okay following the lesson? So let's move to the last one, last case. How about the construction and interpretation of the confidence interval estimator of the population mean when the population variance is unknown, but your sample size is large enough to invoke central limit theorem. So what do we mean when we say sample size large enough? Let's look at these two tables. For the first one, you have confidence level, alpha, alpha over 2, and then z value. For the second table, you have n minus 1 and then t value. Confidence level, given natin ang 90, 95, 98, and 99. The most common confidence levels. And then you have your alpha from your confidence level. That's 1 minus CL over 100%. So from the first one, 90%, ang alpha mo 0 0.10. Next, 0 0.05, 0 0.02, and 0 0.01. Next column, you have alpha over 2. So divide the alpha by 2. 0 0.05, 0 0.025, 0 0.01, and 0 0.005. Next, your z value, nakuha yan from your z table. So first row, that's z sub 0 0.05. So hanapin sa table, the value of that is plus minus 1.282. And then you have the next one for the next row, z value. So z sub 0 0.025. Hanapin sa table, that's plus minus 1.64. Five. So to practice, why don't you look for the other two z values? So notice that your z value for the second row is your t value on the first row, the second table. This is because as the sample size n increases, the tabular values of t approach the z values. From this, a sample size of 30 is considered to be typically large enough for repeatedly sampled means to be approximately normal distributed. That just means that if you have a sample size of greater than or equal to 30, that is large enough to be approximated using the z table. So large enough yon to invoke central limit theorem or CLT. So, ang magbabago, it's your tabular value magiging z-table na and your standard error of the point estimate. So, the one that's going to change is your tabular value magiging z sub a over 2. But the standard error of the point estimate is similar with case 2. For the summary, we have three cases. For the first case, we have population variance is known. Andiyan yung confidence interval estimate, width of the interval estimate, and your maximum allowable deviation. For confidence interval estimate, tabular value mo is from Z. Second case, population variance is unknown. You have there your confidence interval estimate, the width, and NAD, or maximum allowable deviation. For confidence interval estimate, your tabular value is from T, and your numerator, so standard error, would be S, which is the estimator of the population standard deviation. For the third case, we have population variance is unknown. However, your sample size is large enough to invoke CLT, meaning your sample size mo greater than or equal to 30. So you have your confidence interval estimate, the width, and maximum allowable deviation. Under confidence interval estimate, your tabular value would now become or would now come from your Z table. And then your denominator of your standard error would be S, which is again the point estimator of the population standard deviation. So that is it for the first part of your lesson 2 in chapter 4. That's your fighting spirit right there, fighting till the end. There would be another video for the examples of these three cases. Bye!